Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at adding an element of drama and flair to your image, really dramatic color using Camera Raw. Now, I have here a raw image. This image on the left is the image straight out of the camera. White balance is a little messed up. The image was taken at sunset. So the vision I had for this image was something with very fiery colors, really a sharp image, maybe a little soft in some areas. And this is the image that I'm shooting for. So what I'm going to try to do here is guide you through adding dramatic color or how I add dramatic color in this case to an image using only camera raw. This was never really brought into Photoshop other than using camera raw and actually we're using camera raw here in bridge same same as using camera raw in Photoshop but technically we're not even bringing this into Photoshop so I'm going to hit command or control R which is going to open this image in camera raw the first thing I notice about my image is that the foreground is far too dark so I'm gonna attempt to correct that without blowing the sky out by throwing some fill light in there so I'm gonna go up to around 50 uh, 55 60 maybe and uh, when you add a lot of fill light or recovery, recovery which would bring back sky, uh, recovery and fill light when you add a lot of them tend to wash the image out a little bit, kill contrast. So now that I've done that, I definitely want to boost my contrast a little. So I've got a nice brightened up foreground and I am getting a lot of that contrast back. Great. I'm going to slide my clarity slider back. Sliding your clarity slider back softens the image. Sliding it forward really gives a lot of mid-tone punch to the image. It really almost gives it a pseudo HDR look. Uh, not quite what I'm going for here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and set this to right around negative 15. And we're going to leave the vibrance and saturation alone for now. We may come back to them later. What I'm concerned about now is the temperature of this image. It's far too cool. So I'm going to see what the preset white balances have in store for me. I'm going to check out daylight. And I really like this. I really like daylight. Uh, we're going to try cloudy. Cloudy's pretty nice. It's introducing a little bit more orange. I actually like that a little bit more. Shade takes it a step further. Maybe a little bit too far, though. It's starting to look semi-toxic. So I'm going to go back to cloudy. And there's a bit too much green here. So I'm going to take the tint slider, slide it toward a magenta. Because remember, we're at sunset. We really want it to be these warm, sort of orange and pink slash magenta tones that we're, we're going for. I may throw a little bit more orange in there now that I'm looking at it. There we go, and a little bit more magenta. All right, cool. Now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and begin using the adjustment brush. The first thing I want to do is brighten up the foreground a little bit more and darken the sky a little more. So we need two separate adjustment brushes for that. So I'm going to set the one for the sky first. I'm going to go exposure negative, I don't know, 35 or so. Set brightness to zero. Uh, we're going to boost clarity because I want to give a little bit more punch to those clouds and maybe add a little bit of contrast as well. Alrighty, now that we've done that, I'm going to boost the size of my brush and boost the feather. You can try using Auto Mask. Uh, in this case, I don't think Auto Mask is going to do me much good. Auto Mask is going to basically detect the edge for you and only paint in the area where you have that center plus point of your brush. So a lot of cases with skies, it works. Here with all the little edges on the trees, I'm not so confident that it's not going to leave me with a ton of haloing. So I'm not going to use Auto Mask. I'm going to try to wing this by hand, and I'm going to increase my feather a bit. And maybe around 50. There we go. Cool. Now that I've done that, let's begin painting in the sky to darken it up. And you may notice it's making it a little more orange because here in color, you can select the color uh, swatch there and you can add a bit of color to whatever you're working on. I'm throwing some orange there into the sky. And we're going to finish painting this guy in. Again, just focusing on around that, that big tree especially, making sure we kill off any kind of haloing that may want to crop up. All right, cool. Now that we've done that, let's just try down, bringing the brightness down a little bit more. That's not too bad. Uh, just, again, double check around the tree because that's where you're really going to notice that haloing. Now, I also want to create an adjustment brush for the foreground, so I'm going to choose New. And I'm going to select my color swatch, drag saturation to nothing. We may add some color to the foreground, but not right now. I definitely want to boost the clarity here in the foreground, something around 50. And the contrast as well, a little bit, and we'll make it just a little bit brighter. Bring the exposure back to zero just by double-clicking that slider. And we're going to bring the brightness maybe plus 15 or so. And I'm just going to paint in here in the foreground. Kind of a subtle effect happening. Uh, but really what we're doing is we're adding contrast, and we're making the, the foreground of this image a bit sharper. All right? I'm going to roll over this to make sure I hit all the areas that I want to. All right, cool. Now that we've done that, I may go ahead and just add a little bit of magenta to the foreground just to, you know, give it a little bit of the effect that the sky is going to be casting this big red slash orangey glow onto it. I want to create a new uh, 
brush, and I'm going to really boost the brightness to about plus 30. Contrast and clarity. We don't want to add any color, though. And I want to paint here along these rocks just to give the eye something to really look at and follow, almost right to the horizon, like so. There we go. Going in here. Really pumped up those rocks a bit. Add a little more clarity and a bunch more contrast. Touch more brightness. There we go. At this point, the sky is still a little lackluster, so I'm going to go back over to here, and we're going to choose our HSL slash grayscale uh, panel. And what I want to do is with hue, I want to shift the hue of yellow more toward green because there tends to be a lot of yellow in grass, and I really want that grass to look very green. And I'm going to swap orange to look more like red and blue to go a little more purple to give us some purple up there in the sky. Here in saturation, I'm going to boost the saturation of my yellows and greens as well as my blue and purple and magenta. And then under luminance, I want to brighten up the greens and yellows, which is going to give the grass a little bit of a boost. We're going to down the blue, down the purple, and down the magenta. It's going to give us a nice uh, darker sky. All right, now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and add a vignette under the lens correction area. We're going to give a nice heavy vignette, all right, like so. Let me back it off a little bit. There we go. Very nice. And at this point, I'm going to grab the graduated filter. And I'm going to pull one down from the top. However, I want to go ahead and darken it up a bit. Again, we can dump a little bit of contrast in there. We don't really need any more clarity up there. I don't want to go too overboard. And here I'm going to add uh, some nice, almost hot pink is what you're looking to add. And I'm going to pull this straight down from the top. And you can see the effect it's giving my sky. And that looks pretty good. I like that. Maybe it's a little too intense. So we'll back off the saturation of our pink. Eh, you know what? and I don't think it was too intense. There we go, and at this point, I'm gonna give a little bit more contrast up top, and maybe we can use a little bit of clarity. And eh, I can see haloing around the edges of the clouds. Just watch for those little things. Alrighty, cool, now that we've done that, let's create a new graduated filter, and this time we're just gonna boost brightness a little bit. Not really any contrast, not really any clarity, definitely not any color. So hit okay, and we're gonna pull one up from the base here, just to brighten up the foreground a touch. There we go, and select the hand tool, and then all you want to do is get back to the basics panel, and we just want to punch the vibrance way up with this image, somewhere around 75, and just reduce saturation, maybe negative 20, negative 15, negative 20, something like that, and you can see the extreme difference in this image. I actually want to come into lens vignetting and give a little bit of post crop vignette. There we go. Now to preview total before and after, go to the snapshots uh, panel and just hit the P key. There's what we started with. And here's what we finished with. And you can see a huge difference all using Camera Raw. At this point, I would just hit Done. And we go back to uh, the bridge. And you can see, while well, this image will update in just a second, and we'll have something very similar to the image here on the right. There you have it. An image that's pretty similar to this one. One here, one there, completed, uh, created completely in Camera Raw.